Hi there, folks. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new, please do not forget to subscribe and like the video. Today, I'm going to talk about something very important and dear to my heart, especially these days, something that I would call wealth creation, creating wealth, and particularly wealth for our community, for our children, for our families. And uh, when you think about it, especially within what is called generally in the West minorities or a term I don't want to use very often, people of color or to be specific, black people around the world, there is this sort of generational poverty that we sort of inherit from our parents and to go to the children and to the grandchildren. And in many countries, people live on what they call welfare, generational welfare, where my father was on welfare, and I'm on welfare, and my son will be on welfare, and it goes down, down, down the stream. There's also around political circles or, or the media what they tend to call the wealth gap, where they say the rich continue getting richer and the poor continue getting poorer. Now, I don't want to go into the politics of it or a sort of global solution to the problem because I don't have any answer over there, although I might have some suggestions. I don't even have any political weight to express those sort of views. But uh, on a personal level, there are things we can do to ensure that our children and our grandchildren are not going to grow into abject poverty like probably our grandfather did. And uh, I've put a few bullet points here in my diary. I'm going to go through those. But before I go through that, I just want to make a disclaimer. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a real estate investor. I don't have much uh, financial knowledge. But these are the things that I do think practically could help you save and secure a future for your family at least number one i put talent talent is a bit difficult to manage because first of all sometimes talent is actually all the time talent it's, it's given it's a gift from god you can't force it you can't uh, manufacture one but sometimes our children have got the talents and either we don't see them because we don't expose them to a lot of opportunities, which is why uh, rich people, middle class people, upper middle class people will expose their kids to different extracurricular activities, uh, sports, music, whatever, so that they can pinpoint where this kid has got a talent and start to support them in making it a career or something that they can leverage in the future in their lives so that's one thing i'm not gonna say much about it except that if you have got kids try to expose them to a multiple range of things in your environment including school work and extra curriculum activities to see if perhaps they're not gonna go the next be the next um i don't know uh, star in singing, in, in the tennis, or whatever the, the case might be. Obviously, that involves a certain investment of time and money. And uh, again, if you cannot afford it, that's not your fault. But at times, like many other things I'm going to name here, it takes a little bit of sacrifice, maybe shifting our focus away from other things, like, I don't know, cigarette, beer, wine, uh, celebrations towards these things that we think will have a lasting impact or trying to work extra hard to two three jobs to see if we can increase our income and uh, throw that into this sort of uh, endeavors that we have long lasting uh, consequences positive ones for our families 
The second is education, which probably for me, I'll put it on top really because that's something we can control. Once again, some kids are brilliant by nature. Others struggle a bit to adapt to this uh, school environment. But whatever the case, it is good to expose our children to a nice school, to a nice education. Again, depending on our affordability and to monitor properly that they are uh, studying uh, well. Now, this is dear to my heart, as I said, because I personally grew up in a small village out in Africa. And if it wasn't for schooling or education, I definitely wouldn't be here. I'm not claiming I did it all by myself or, or whatever. I had a lot of help along the way. Uh, for most of the, the time, I was just lucky to be in the right place at the right time. But definitely having an education was a very important, is still a very important asset up until now. And I hope my children will pick up from here and do better than I did. And when it comes to education, I really want to draw a, a bit of an attention onto this very crucial thing, especially if you are in the West, you have to think of an education as an investment. It's not a hobby. It's not a passion. Forget about it. It's a middle class, spoiled children of follow your passion, the money you will follow, do what you like. Look at an ed education as an investment where you have to have a return on your investment. Because in the end of the day, what's the point of having a degree, I don't know, in history and end up serving a coffee in McDonald's or in Starbucks? What was the point of the degree? Not only you're not doing what you thought you were passionate about, which was history, but you're not doing anything that is related to what you studied. And it, is, it will be very hard to recap your investment, to be honest. So you would have wasted for three years of your youth and uh, tens of thousands of uh, students loan into that sort of thing without anything to show for it. So be careful when your children are about to choose a major. I would encourage really our people to focus on to what is generally known as STEM, which is probably science, technology, engineering and the math especially engineering these days including software engineering i think it is a very growing field and uh, it is a, a really rewarding career maybe i'm biased obviously because i'm an engineer but i think i can see a reward that i couldn't have gotten if i've gone with a degree in sociology for example so education with the, an emphasis on two skills that are in demand in your region in your country and uh, particularly not going with the masses because sometimes what you see in the media, the advice we get from, I don't know, Oprah or Dr. Phil is probably not geared towards someone who is starting from scratch. It is geared to those people who don't have anything to worry about their living costs as soon as they do graduate. And uh, speaking of STEM and education, of that, uh, what I've realized is that by the time the kids are about 17, 18, and about to decide on what to do at university, it might be too late to jump into a certain field, especially if it requires mathematics and the science, which is what STEM is there. So it is pretty, it is important to monitor those kids when they're still in lower grades to make sure they are picking up those subjects and that they get the sort of hands a grip on the basic principles they are learning in school. So that's going to be a easier for them to get access to university within a competitive um, market, but B, be able to pass. Um, and to understand what is being taught at university and the CB competitive on the job market, there will be a lot of uh, STEM graduates in the future because everybody is promoting STEM these days. But there are other things. I think law in some countries is pretty good. Lawyer, medicine is always good and lots of uh, health science degrees. But what I'm saying, just be intentional when you're choosing your major for yourself or for your children. The third thing, so I mentioned talent education. The third thing I would think, um, I thought I call it sort of a wealth transfer, generational wealth transfer. So what happens sometimes we are thinking of ourselves. I'm a sort of a 
Gen Gen X. I'm a sort of Gen X generation. I'm not gonna give my age, but sometimes uh people look into I'm I'm at this age. I want something for me. I want to go around the world. I want to do this. I want to look that. We don't look back. If I make a sacrifice, my children will probably do better than I do, or whatever I do. Let me see if that's gonna be have a positive impact on my children. That's how rich people think. They well obviously they've got enough to do whatever they want to do but they always think of wealth transfer to their children so when they buy a house they are thinking of it as an investment for the next generation not necessarily for themselves so real estate is one of those things if you can manage to buy a house and they try to pay it off, to pay it off before you retire and definitely before you die you don't want to leave behind any debt so that's a, a one way of making sure your children will have at least a good start when you pass on the second one is life insurance is something we often neglect but sometimes it is not that expensive i think in depending on the countries where you are you could get one i don't know even a 30 dollars a month life insurance some kids some families got rich or got out of troubles because someone died and they left something for them in in their will or in a life insurance so that's all i can say there is also investment especially um like in 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 here in new zealand we've got what called a kiwi saver you could create one for your children and what it helps is when you buy the kiwi saver is like a retirement contribution fund and you only are allowed to withdraw it towards the end of your working life, I think at the age of 65. Between 60 and 65, I'm not sure about the number, but it's out there. But there are two exceptions where you can withdraw that money earlier. One is if you go through some financial hardships, say you lose a job and don't have money to pay rent, you can uh, apply to get part of your investment or your contribution. To pay for those but the most important area of uh, of uh, of uh, withdrawal or any withdrawal is when you want to buy your first home and i see it for me like an opportunity to help the children to put even if you don't put your own money but teach them when they get the first job to sign up with the kiwi server put 20 dollars 30 dollars whatever the case might be there's an employer contribution if they are working more like the 401k for all one k in the in the usa and uh, the advantage is if 10 years down the line they've been paying on a QC server they might have fifty thousand in there they can withdraw that including the contribution from the employer and you start to pay uh, to pay a deposit for their first home that's acceptable here but even if they don't do that they know that their life will be better off when they retire. All right, those are the two things I wanted. To, I wanted to mention that we should think of our generation over as a, as a family, as we plan for our finances and think forward instead of thinking just in front of our nose. Okay, that's all I can say, guys. Talent, education. Uh, wealth transfer which include buying a property buying some life insurance and uh, buying some investments either for you or for the children that's what i can say if you have anything to add please feel free to comment in the comment section below and uh, if you've got any suggestion on to what you want me to talk about please feel free i will see you in the next video cheers for now bye